Thank you for joining us today. Can you please briefly introduce yourself and your company to the viewers? Sure. So my name is Samuel. Um, I represent Frexter. Mm -hmm. Frexter is a real estate investment platform oh. and we are headquartered in Singapore. Yeah. Um, over the past few years, we have grown uh, significantly. So now we also have an office in Australia as well. Oh, okay. Um, and being a real estate investment platform, we basically um, are the link between our investor base, mm -hmm. who comprise mainly um, um, sophisticated individual investors, yeah. family office and institutions. And we link them up with uh, high quality developers, mm -hmm. uh, fund managers, uh, etc. in the real estate space. Cool. Um, we have a good track record. In mm -hmm. the last four years, we have completed about uh, oh. close to 25 projects. Wow. Um, it's been four years already in the steel industry? Yeah, wow. slightly more than that, but yeah. we've been more active in, in the last four years. Mm -hmm. So close to 25 projects um, across different geographies. Obviously, being based in Singapore, our biggest okay. market would be uh, uh, Singapore, but we've also gone into, uh, we've also co-invested into projects in, in Australia, in uh, Japan, in uh, London. What about Korea? <laughs> Not Korea yet, unfortunately. Not yet? Okay. But uh, definitely a market that we mm -hmm. are open to, to look into. Okay. Um, but mainly, yeah, developed markets um, are, are sort of our primary focus for now because regulations are clearer there. Oh, mm. cool. And in terms of um, asset class, mm -hmm. uh, we invest across residential asset class, mm -hmm. um, commercial, um, industrial logistics, yeah. uh, and even hotels. Okay, cool. So is real estate sector is the most biggest um, industry in SEO market? Mm. I think real estate is the biggest industry, not just for STO, yeah. but if you talk about oh, yeah. the various the asset class asset. globally, yeah, it is. it's actually the largest, uh, yeah, yeah. A largest uh, asset class. Um, mm. So over 300 trillion mm -hmm. uh, worth, um, larger than actually the equity and debt market. So, yeah. so it's, a, it's a very big uh, market that is ripe for uh, disruption. Mm -hmm. And I think tokenization is one way of doing it. Okay. Then how can we invest in your real estate STO? Yeah, so um, Frexter is, uh, is regulated by the Singapore MAS, okay. Monetary Authority of Singapore. Mm -hmm. So we are licensed um, and currently we, we accept uh, investors who are what we call in, in Singapore accredited investors and above. Mm -hmm. um, so what, they, what investors need to do is basically to go online onto the digital platform, yeah. um, sign up, which is free. Mm -hmm. um, and once they sign up, they get access to look at more information on the various project opportunities that we offer. Okay. And then only after you find one that you like, for example, if you like, if you want to go into Japan to mm -hmm. invest in uh, logistics, for example, yeah. or London in, into hotels, then mm -hmm. you can choose that particular asset. Oh, okay. And then once you select it and you decide to invest in it, that's where you, you, you make the investment. Is there any minimum range that we have to put in? Yeah, so the, the minimum uh, ticket size for now that we are accepting is about 25,000. 25,000, okay. Yeah. yeah. Which, if you, USD if you think, um, this is this is Sing dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so USD will be slightly lesser, actually, about okay. one point three. Um, but if you think about that value compared to the value of the asset, which are in the tens of millions or even hundred millions, it's quite it's quite accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, most of our so our minimum is twenty five, but on average, each investor comes in for about two hundred thousand okay. typically. And for family offices, they typically come in a, a few a few million dollars. So it really depends, All but right. we make it accessible um, at a minimum of 25,000 and mm -hmm. typically for someone who tries it out for the first time, yeah. they will just put in the minimum, right? But once they get <laughs> yeah. comfortable, they yeah. get better returns, then they will put mm. in more. Can we also invest in Korea then for your platform? Currently, we don't have any uh, Korean projects yet, Okay. but it's a market that we are open to, to look at. All um, right. And if there are good opportunities, um, we will, we will consider putting it onto our platform for our investors. Mm, cool. I think the typical projects yeah. that we uh, invest in are <coughs> in real estate, what we call value wet and opportunistic uh, strategy, mm -hmm. which means it's mainly um, uh, development assets or assets that we need to reposition or, or reno do some renovation to position, position it better before selling it. Mm -hmm. And these kind of projects typically give better returns. Okay. So typically the returns uh, we target at least uh, double digit. Wow. So 10 to 15% In how many annum. years? 10 What's to 15% per, per annum. Oh, per annum? Okay. Yeah. And holding period, um, uh, it really ranges from project to project. So typically okay. it's between 3 to 5 years. 3 to 5 years. Mm, typically. Mm, yeah. Cool. 
And can you provide an example of successful STO um, that your company has facilitated? Mm, sure. Now? So mm. um, earlier, I think less than a month ago, we did the first uh, dual listing okay. of uh, of uh, security of to of security tokens mm -hmm. on both the Singapore and Australia market. Okay. So basically, we did an offering, uh, a tokenized offering. Um, simultaneous tokenized offering for Singapore and Australia investors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So both investors could in invest at the same time through their own regulated platform into a uh, Australian unit trust, which we have tokenized, and yep. the Australian unit trust um, basically invested into a residential project in Perth, Australia. In Perth, yeah. Yeah. So that was very, very well received. Mm. Um, we believe it's the first, first such uh, dual listing mm. tokenized structure in, in, in the region. Um, so that yeah, like I mentioned, it was very well received. I think yeah. the whole offer was taken up in less than two hours. Mm. Mm. Do you think in global STO market is still growing? Do you think we're still in the early stage? Yeah, I think we are still in the early stage. Mm. Um, there are lots of uh, um, potential, also a lot of challenges mm -hmm. um, that we need to overcome. So over the next you know couple of years, we do I, I do expect that to see. To, to be increase um, harmonization of regulations yeah. uh, I hope to I expect to see growth in um, mm. more security token exchanges mm. and even tokens that can be fungible across yeah. um, uh, exchanges mm. uh, I, I think there will be greater institutional participation mm -hmm. um, as developers institutions um, yeah. uh, fund managers get more comfortable with this mm -hmm. and also uh, greater uh, retail participation. Mm. As long as people see that it works, then they will they will go into this market. Yeah. Then what are the key advantages of STOs compared to traditional security offerings? Compared mm. to the traditional assets. Yeah. So uh, I think a few a few a few advantages. I think one would be um, there is a greater variety of uh, investment offering mm -hmm. that can be accessed now by investors. Yeah. A specific example would be. Um, say a private equity fund, mm -hmm. right? a private equity real estate fund, for example. Typically, um, some of the bigger uh, private equity fund fund managers, when they do their fundraising, they only go to the larger institutions yeah. or, or the larger um, family offices, for example. Mm -hmm. So, uh, an, an, an individual would definitely not have access to it. Mm -hmm. But through uh, through our platform and through uh, tokenization through our platform, we allow. Um, uh, our investors to access into some of these uh, private equity real estate funds. Mm -hmm. So not only that, also it allows for single asset tokenization. Yeah. It allows us to uh, tokenize overseas assets. So now it's easy for you to invest in overseas mm -hmm. assets. So I think that's that's one. Um, another advantage would probably be in um, lesser intermediaries, um, which leads to lower costs. Mm -hmm. Because let's say if you pair blockchain with um, smart contracts, you you allow uh, instantaneous settlement. And therefore, you don't need, for example, a clearing house. Yeah. So that reduces costs, and ultimately, that that improves the returns to investors. Mm -hmm. So that's also another another advantage. Yeah, cool. Mm. Then, is there any advice you would give to companies or investors who are considering to join this SEO industry in the future? Yeah, I, I would say. Um, I think my advice would be to because the, the, the industry is still quite nascent mm -hmm. and it's still growing. So, yeah. but I, I would advise companies to work with uh, players that are proven and have a good track record. Mm -hmm. So I think being licensed is important. Yeah, um, having a good track record, mm -hmm. you know, uh, is very important. Mm -hmm. And and because there are many nuances in the regulations and how the market operates. So yeah. so I think a new a new investor or a new uh, developer or a new institution coming to the market. Uh, I think you, my advice would be to, to work with, uh, with an industry participant that's been doing it for a number of years and have demonstrated a good track record. Mm, cool. Okay, mm. that's all for today's interview. Thank okay. you for your time. Thank you, June. Thank you. Appreciate it.